Support for Cinema Classics comes from Film Columbus, enriching our community to make Columbus a destination for, for film education, exhibition, and production. Learn more at filmcolumbus.com. Cinema Classics is produced by John DeSando and Johnny DiLoretto. Listen to shows every Thursday at 8.01 p.m. and full shows online at wcbe.org. I'm Johnny DiLoretto. I'm John DeSando. This is Cinema Classics. It is. And help me through the night. <laughs> through the... The filmography, of, of <laughs> right, right. Hem Knight <clears throat> Shyamalan mm -hmm. is a, a, a problem for me. Okay, well, he's a problem for everyone. <laughs> I think Not so. just you. <laughs> All right. Everybody, I think, uniformly agrees that he is a problematic filmmaker. I don't yeah. think there's any flat-out M. Night Shyamalan fans who adore everything the guy's ever done. Okay. All right. Um, and that'd be like that'd be like adoring your own bowel movement at times. <laughs> Because there's there are some excremental works in his canon. Well, typically he recently has Glass, mm -hmm. which is about James McAvoy playing the twenty-four or twenty-five personalities. Right, I know which exasperated you. <clears throat> it does. I can't keep track of that many. See, if you do that and you give me a whole bunch of flashbacks, I'm just out. Yeah, why twenty-four? Why not thirteen <clears throat> or nine? Well, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know that, uh, but it, it, this it's it's mixed reviewed. Oh yeah. Okay, so and it's it's not bad, considering the turkeys that he's had. Right. Well, you got What's exciting about this movie is the context in which it it appears in this in, at this point in his career. He's been experiencing a sort of renaissance since uh, he came out with um, Split. In the visit. The visit in 2015. Right. These small, now that one I like. Right. The small, low budget, simple movies. Yep. He's getting back to basics, and audiences responded. They weren't. They didn't have huge M Night Shyamalan type of twists. I mean, they did have twists, but the movies themselves weren't. Uh, didn't live or die on the twist. That's you know what I mean. And That's what the mistake he's often made. I was going to say. So <clears throat> suddenly he gets a little commercial cachet again right and turns out split was a surprise sequel or tie-in to unbreakable right the really great superhero movie he made back in the early 2000s yeah and so it's it it's it's disappointing that it falls flat yeah and you know when he <clears throat> when he brings actors like Bruce Willis back I'm happy yeah okay when he ties in his films and it makes some sense then I'm happy but if you look at some of the films he's made, um, After Earth, The Last Airbender, The Happening, Lady in the Water, yeah. The Village, does any of that do anything for you? Yeah, I remember. Well, see, I remember The Village came at that point early on in his career where, where everyone was still excited about it. Yeah, it was right after Signs. It was right after Signs, <laughs> which was a hit. People liked it, but I think it also annoyed people because the aliens could be killed with water. Yeah. <laughs> you, already, you know, there's this alien terrorizing the family, and then you just throw a glass of water on it. Well, he has that's a, a, a pervasive motif for him. Right. So, water? Yeah, it is. Throwing, yeah. yeah. Sign of death or weakness. Mm. Interesting. And we know that the Bruce Willis character. Oh, yeah, he falls into the pool at the right. end of Unbreakable. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, which almost wipes him out. The thing with that's so infuriating about this guy is from the start, even with The Sixth Sense, which I wasn't as big a fan of as most people, but from the start it was evident he knew how to build a scene, he knew where to put the camera, he knew how to pace his films. He had this almost, it was like a, a prodigy, he was like a prodigy. And you could tell, wow, this guy really knows how to make a movie, but can he tell a story? Yeah, and. <clears throat> you would not be surprised to know that his favorite filmmaker is Steven Hitchcock Spielberg. or Spielberg. I could see right. either one of those guys. Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. And I think when he puts himself in his films, which he does every one of them, yeah. he reminds me of his weakness because Hitchcock did that. Yeah. And that was a matter of strength. Right. See, now isn't it interesting? Spielberg does not put himself in no, any, any of his movies. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Hitchcock does. So there's definitely a confluence of influence <laughs> there. A confluence of influence. Oh, yeah, you're good. You're you like good. that? Um, you, you wouldn't be surprised to know that Raiders of the Lost Ark is his favorite film. I would not be surprised. Well, I guess I don't. I well, after that, he's got some sizable ones. Godfather, Jaws, uh -huh. uh, Exorcist, mm -hmm. 
being there, oddball. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, and Rebecca from the 1940s. So Hitchcock and Spielberg. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so you can see the pedigree there. You can see where he learned yes. to, to build scenes and make movies, but he just always seems to stumble on story points, you and, know? And don't you think that this whole idea of the twist ending, which has given him renown, mm -hmm. every time you hear about an M. Night Shyamalan movie, the first thing you say is, oh, what's that twist ending? Don't well, you think he's... I hate that. I, that I is know. one of the worst influences on pop culture and cinema in the past 20 years. When he made The Sixth Sense, it was a huge hit. Sure. And because of that twist ending... I know, I... Where Bruce Willis turns out to have been the dead guy all along. Right. <laughs> um, everybody, not, not just M. Night Shyamalan, everybody started aping that formula. Yes. Every movie had to have a twist, you know? And it, it really ruins it. And you, as somebody who, who doesn't want to put that much, that much stress or importance on the ending of a film. Thank you. Suddenly, endings became yes. uh, really fraught. Great point. You can see a part of my frustration. Uh, as we've often talked about, I, I, I'm not great at remembering endings because by that point I got it. Yeah. And, and so if you're going to emphasize the ending for me, you're going to, you're going to torture well, me. Well, I, I mean, I think it is a little bit of an oversimplification, right? Oh, yeah. Sometimes the ending is momentous. Look, at we've always Casablanca. had... Casablanca. Yeah, you know, even Edgar Allan Poe, we've always had surprise endings. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have a great ending. Does not necessarily have to be a surprise ending. Right, right. But we have had just a thematically sensible. One. Yeah, I think he has he has taken it to a high art form that's eventually painted himself into a corner, mm -hmm. and he needs to get out of that corner. And perhaps right. he is, uh, maybe with glass. Uh, you know, it's it's shattered. Uh, the, the the I think the plot is fractured, mm -hmm. uh, particularly with. McAvoy's character with so many, I think he displays only about six of them okay. in, in, in the film. And there are others to take the weight of the film rather than just the McAvoy character. So I think Shyamalan has, has figured out how to get away from any central uh, navigating point that, everybody, that, re, that the whole film relies on and tries to spread it out a bit. Because yeah. there's not that much of the McAvoy character, you would think, mm -hmm. in Glass. Once you get Bruce Willis coming in there, you've got a lot, a lot of relief, yeah. and you've got the female psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it helps to have these people take more of a center place than say Haley Joel Osmond or whatever his name is. Right, right. And, uh, but what was interesting about Unbreakable twenty years ago was that the the slow burn of the realization that this was a superhero movie. It wasn't marketed as a superhero movie. It doesn't initially seem right, to be a superhero right, movie. Yeah. It kind of unfolds in this, you know, the drama, the essential drama of the, the piece is that Bruce Willis slowly discovers that he's never been sick or hurt in his <laughs> life. Right. Which is yeah. kind of a dumb thing that he realizes in his mid-40s. <laughs> yeah, that he's never right. taken a day off of work. How long does it take you? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, look, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's, that was interesting about it because the twist came halfway through the movie, really. The central twist. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Well, I don't know. Anyway, I'm I'm feeling that we're moving toward a twist ending here. Perhaps we should call him to find out what we should do to twist our ending. I don't know. There is maybe we maybe John. Here's the beauty part. It doesn't have a twist. <laughs> it just ends. No, it does. I'm going to tell you, he's my favorite director of all time. That's the twist. I've been fooling all along. Who is it? Shamo. Oh, he's your favorite. Right, he's That's the favorite. twist. Oh my god. That's a horrifying twist. <laughs>